making corrections in the bytecode. So last week I talked with a client and they had a problem. They had some SAP PI modules for 7.1, something like that, that failed. Uh, and when I looked into the problem, it was because when we were passing the XMLs, we got a parent value and this value for some documents then started to be different. And then it was taking substring of these values. It was taken from zero to 10. And this value was only nine characters long. So it dumped and that meant that all the remaining uh, messages would not be processed. So that was uh, terrifying. And then I needed to figure out, okay, so how do we actually fix this? And I was searching around and considering, do I actually, am I actually able to install a NetViva Developer Studio 7.1 with JDK uh, 4.1.4 and be able to run it and compile it and create anything meaningful in a, <laughs> a short period of time? And I got, thought that that would be pretty difficult. So uh, instead, I found a program that's called Recap. You can find it on GitHub. And what this is able to do is it will give you, you can take the R EFR, it will then give you the ability to go into all modules. So it's essentially decompiling it. And what you can then go and do is you can see what are the modifications or you can go in, see what the bytecode is for a specific part of code. You can make modifications in it. So I just change the value from 10 till 8, press save, put it back into the ear file, and then I could deploy it, and it worked out seamlessly. Um, hope, help, <laughs> luckily. It was obviously not the ideal solution. Probably I should have said something that if value is less than 10, just use the, the no substring. But, oh well, never mind. Um, so that, that worked out uh, pretty well, but, and, then I got uh, to think about some stories I've heard about some old mainframe developers, uh, or at least before I started doing uh, SAP work, that they were actually able just to take and do assembly programming just in the main program while it's running live, make some modification, and press whatever, update or whatever, and it will update the program it, even though without booting or anything like that. And there was probably some reasons for why that it wasn't possible to restart or the way it was running or something like that. Uh, but that must have been a little different than, than what we have today, where you just have to do governance and make sure that you document all the things that's actually affecting things in production. Uh, and obviously that would not be possible in a multi-Java clustered environment where you had to go through all of these different uh, components and make modifications. So I guess the question and challenge is both, was it just that you wanted to change a specific value or was it actually being able to change the complete structure and add an extra method or an extra check that said, whatever happened here, we'll just insert it and then go back and continue the, the code. And so, yeah, an interesting thought, and hopefully it will take a little while before I have to go and do bytecode modifications and do something that's a little more difficult than this. But, uh, yeah, if you are going to, to check out something, go check out the recap and see what you're actually able to do there. Thank you.